Right now, inside SpaceX's Star Factory, six starships stand in a row. Ships 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44. But this isn't just storage. This is their secret assembly line. Look at ship 44. It's shorter than the others. Missing segments. Why would SpaceX build an incomplete ship? Because they are testing something revolutionary. While everyone watched fireworks explode over Starbase, cameras captured the real story inside. Welding robots, exposed nose cones, and a production line that changes everything. How many ships can they actually build at once? Let's dive right in. Six ship, standing in perfect formation. This isn't storage. This is revolution. Ships 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44, arranged in numerical order like soldiers waiting for battle. While Boeing takes years to build one Starliner, while NASA celebrates single vehicle milestones, SpaceX just casually revealed six starships in various stages of completion. All at once. The aerospace industry has rules. One ship at a time. 18 months minimum. Quality through careful, methodical construction. SpaceX just threw those rules out the window. But here's what nobody saw coming. Those welding robots working in the background? They never stopped. While we watched fireworks paint the sky. While families celebrated on the beach. Those machines kept building the future. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no breaks, no holidays. This changes everything we thought we knew about rocket manufacturing. But why now? What pushed us SpaceX to reveal this? Ship 44 stops everyone in their tracks. It's shorter, missing segments, deliberately incomplete. Every engineer who sees this footage asks the same question. Why would you build a broken ship? Traditional aerospace would never waste resources on incomplete vehicles. Every component costs millions. Every weld matters. But Ship 44 isn't broken. It's brilliant. SpaceX is using it as a test platform. They're validating new manufacturing techniques before applying them to full-scale ships. Think of it as a $50 million prototype that saves them $500 million in potential mistakes. The welding robot positioned next to Ship 44? That's not standard equipment. It's a custom-built system designed specifically for this exact purpose. SpaceX isn't just building ships. They're building the machines that build the ships. This is where the story gets interesting. Because that robot represents something bigger. It's proof that SpaceX has moved beyond traditional manufacturing. They're not just an aerospace company anymore. They're becoming a manufacturing technology company that happens to build rockets. While everyone focuses on those shiny ships, the real breakthrough is happening at the launch pads. That adapter being worked on? It's not just a test fitting. SpaceX is preparing to do something unprecedented. Static fire tests of ships without boosters. Ships sitting directly on the pad. Engines firing at full power. No booster underneath. This breaks another aerospace rule. Traditional rocket testing requires complete vehicles. You build the whole thing. Then you test the whole thing. But SpaceX is about to test ship engines independently. Here's why this matters. Instead of waiting months for booster integration, they can validate ship systems immediately. This cuts testing time in half. Maybe more. But there's a problem. A massive problem that SpaceX is solving in real time. How do you fuel a ship without a booster connection? Cryogenic propellants can't use flexible hoses. The temperatures would destroy them instantly. We're talking about minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit for liquid oxygen, minus 259 for liquid methane. Those QD plates we saw floating around the facility, they're not random components. They're pieces of a puzzle SpaceX is solving right now. The solution has to be rigid enough to handle the pressure, flexible enough to connect reliably, and removable enough to clear the blast zone. My theory? They're developing a side-mounted fuel connection system. Something that can swing into position, lock onto the ship, fuel it completely, then swing away before engine ignition. But that's just speculation. The real answer is probably more innovative than anything we can imagine. Six ships in production simultaneously. But look deeper into that footage. There's evidence of even more ships being prepared. Those nose cones lined up inside the Star Factory. 
They're not just storage. They're inventory for ships that don't exist yet. SpaceX is building components faster than they can assemble complete vehicles. This is mass production thinking applied to spacecraft, and it's terrifying every other aerospace company on Earth. Boeing builds one Starliner, celebrates, then starts thinking about the next one. SpaceX has six ships in various stages, with components for six more already manufactured, while simultaneously designing improvements for the next generation. The welding robots are the key to this entire operation. Human welders are skilled, but they're also the bottleneck. They get tired. They make mistakes. They work eight-hour shifts. Robots work continuously. They maintain perfect consistency. They never have bad days. This is how you build ships at automotive speeds while maintaining aerospace quality. But here's the scary part for competitors. This is just the beginning. SpaceX is scaling up. Those six ships? That's not their production capacity. That's their warm-up. Those fireworks over Starbase weren't just celebration. They were a message. Some of those low-altitude explosions that looked dangerous? Those were controlled detonations of failed components. SpaceX doesn't waste anything, not even their mistakes. They dispose of failed parts safely during community events. This reveals something profound about SpaceX's culture. They're not hiding their failures. They're integrating them into their operations. Every explosion teaches them something. Every failure makes the next ship better. Traditional aerospace companies bury their failures, hide them in classified reports, pretend they don't happen. SpaceX literally celebrates theirs with fireworks. But there's more. Those fireworks were also a demonstration of their relationship with the local community. SpaceX isn't just building rockets in Starbase. They're building a space-focused society. The message was clear. We're not just your neighbors. We're your partners in reaching the stars. That person with the measuring device checking welds? That's not routine inspection. That's data collection for their manufacturing improvement system. Every weld gets measured. Every measurement gets cataloged. Every data point improves the welding robot's performance. This is closed-loop manufacturing at its finest. The inspection data feeds directly back into the robot programming. Each ship gets better welds than the last. This is how you achieve aerospace quality at industrial speed. But here's what's really happening. SpaceX isn't just improving their current ships. They're building a database of manufacturing knowledge that will make future ships even better. Those repairs on the pad legs? They're not just maintenance. They're evidence that launch stresses exceeded original calculations. But instead of panicking, Instead of going back to the drawing board, SpaceX is learning from each flight and reinforcing weak points in real time. This is adaptive engineering. The infrastructure evolves with the vehicles. The manufacturing improves with each iteration. That spinning cladding component? That wasn't just bad weather. That was a design flaw revealing itself in real time. When heavy components spin during installation, it means the attachment points aren't properly balanced. This is a serious engineering problem that could have caused catastrophic failure. But watch what happened next. Instead of forcing the installation, instead of pretending the problem didn't exist, SpaceX stopped everything. They lowered the component. They went back to the drawing board. This is the difference between SpaceX and traditional aerospace. Traditional companies would have meetings about the problem. They'd form committees. They'd write reports. They'd spend months analyzing the issue. SpaceX stopped analyzed, adapted, immediately. Those missing tag lines that should have prevented the spinning? They're not just safety equipment. They're part of the installation system. Without them, the cladding becomes aerodynamically unstable. But here's the twist. SpaceX is probably using this failure to develop a better installation method. They don't just fix problems. They turn them into improvements. Those tower elevators with steps leading up to them? That's not poor design. That's intentional engineering. You can't roll equipment carts into those elevators. This seems inefficient until you understand the reasoning. Heavy equipment in elevators creates dangerous loading conditions. By forcing manual transport, they eliminate the risk of elevator overload. This reveals SpaceX's safety philosophy. They don't just add safety systems. They design safety into the fundamental architecture. But this creates a logistics challenge. How do you move heavy ship components up the tower? 
The answer is those crane systems we keep seeing. The elevators are for people. The cranes are for equipment. This separation of human and cargo transport isn't just efficient, it's safer. People and heavy equipment don't mix in confined spaces. SpaceX learned this lesson and built it into their infrastructure. Those mysterious pipe endings at the deluge system? They're not mistakes. They're overflow protection that could prevent catastrophic failure. When water pressure exceeds safe limits, those pipes release the excess away from the tanks. It's a safety system disguised as incomplete plumbing. The burst valve design is ingenious. Instead of damaging the main tanks, excess pressure gets directed to a safe release point. This protects the entire water system from explosive failure. But why such extreme pressures? Because rocket exhaust temperatures exceed 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The water system has to deliver massive volumes instantly. This isn't just fire suppression. It's controlled steam explosion management. The science is terrifying. Rocket exhaust hitting water creates instant steam. Steam expands at 1,600 times the volume of water. Without proper pressure relief, the entire system could explode. SpaceX has turned this dangerous physics into a controlled process. They're not just managing water, they're managing controlled explosions. Those orange cables and protective tubes, they're not temporary installations. They're permanent camera positions for documenting every test. But here's why this matters. Those cameras aren't just for public relations. They're engineering tools. Every test gets recorded from multiple angles. This footage becomes data for improving future designs. The positioning is strategic. Those cameras can see things human observers might miss. Structural flex under load. Exhaust patterns during ignition. Component behavior under extreme stress. This visual data is as important as telemetry data. Maybe more important. Because cameras catch the unexpected. The things sensors weren't designed to measure. SpaceX is building a surveillance system that captures every detail of their operations. Not for security, for learning. Every frame teaches them something new. Every component we see being moved, every weld being tested, every system being installed. It's all part of a manufacturing philosophy that's unlike anything in traditional aerospace. SpaceX isn't just building rockets. They're building a manufacturing system that can build rockets. There's a difference. Traditional aerospace builds rockets one at a time. Custom manufacturing for each vehicle. SpaceX is building a production line that can build rockets continuously. The inspection process we witnessed isn't just checking for defects. It's collecting data that improves the entire production line. Each measurement makes the next ship better. But here's the real question. Can this system maintain quality while increasing speed? Traditional aerospace achieves reliability through slow, methodical processes. SpaceX is betting they can achieve the same reliability through data-driven rapid iteration. The answer to that question will determine whether SpaceX transforms space access or whether their aggressive timeline leads to catastrophic failures. Those tower modifications aren't just improvements. They're responses to structural stresses that exceeded original calculations. The tower is literally being reinforced while it's being used. This is engineering under pressure, literally. The chopsticks on pad two still have those steel components in the catch surfaces. These aren't finished installations. They're protective measures while the system gets refined. But this raises a critical question. Are they planning to catch ships at pad two? The short, stubby appearance compared to pad one's chopsticks suggests different functionality. Maybe these are designed for different vehicle configurations. Maybe they're just not finished yet. Or maybe SpaceX is preparing for something we haven't imagined yet. The structural challenges are real. These towers are supporting loads that no structure in history has ever experienced. The forces during a rocket catch are beyond anything in traditional engineering. SpaceX is learning about these forces in real time. Each test teaches them something new about the physics they're trying to control. This assembly line isn't just about building ships faster. It's about building a space-based civilization. Six ships in production simultaneously means six different missions being prepared. Six different capabilities being developed. Six different paths to making humanity a multi-planetary species. But the real breakthrough isn't the ships themselves. It's the manufacturing philosophy behind them. SpaceX has created a production system that can scale to meet any demand. 
Need a hundred ships for Mars colonization? This system can build them. Need specialized variants for different missions? This system can adapt. Need to replace ships lost in the inevitable accidents of space exploration? This system can respond. The competitors are watching this footage with growing alarm. Because they're not just watching SpaceX build ships. They're watching SpaceX build the future of space manufacturing. And that future is arriving faster than anyone expected. So here's what we just witnessed. Six ships, one assembly line, and a manufacturing revolution that's rewriting the rules of space exploration. SpaceX isn't just building rockets anymore. They're building the infrastructure for humanity's next chapter. While competitors struggle with single vehicles, SpaceX is preparing for fleets. But this raises the ultimate question. Are we ready for what comes next? When ships launch as frequently as airplanes? When Mars missions become routine? When space manufacturing becomes as common as Earth manufacturing? The answers are being welded together right now inside that star factory. And honestly, I think we're about to find out just how fast the impossible can become inevitable. What do you think happens when this production line reaches full capacity? Drop your predictions below, because at this rate we might not have long to wait. Until next time, keep looking up. The future is being built faster than we can imagine.